Thanks for watching CBS 8 Plus and welcome to this throwback special. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. We've been broadcasting in San Diego for more than 70 years now and have seen so much change, including a trip to the store. In this throwback special, we dove into our CBS 8 archives and found an evolution in shopping in San Diego last century. We started North Park almost 70 years ago. The J.C. Penney store in North Park, completely remodeled over an 18 month period, was open to the public on August 12, 1954, with a good sized crowd on hand for the ceremonies. One of the speakers was the store's manager, V.R. Lynn. Another was supervisor James Robbins, along with city and North Park dignitaries and Penny executives. Then manager Lynn and Lucy Recht, Miss North Park, were ready for the official act of ribbon cutting. That was the signal for shoppers to enter. They found an interior described as new as tomorrow. The store in preparing for the opening had on hand an inventory of merchandise valued at well over a million dollars. That J.C. Penney was what has become a truly endangered species, a big standalone department store. By the late 1970s, strip shopping centers and giant malls were popping up all over San Diego. They were big business. And while in some parts of town, it may have started to seem like too much of a good thing, other parts of San Diego felt neglected and the people who lived there noticed. This is the granddaddy of all shopping centers in San Diego County, the South Bay Plaza in National City. It's hard to believe, but this center has been here almost a quarter of a century. And ever since it started doing business back in 1955, other shopping centers have blossomed into big money makers throughout San Diego County. Business experts say a good shopping center is one of the best investments known to man. Here in San Diego, developers have used that line of thinking to build new shopping centers and expand existing ones for tremendous profits. As an example, Mission Valley pulled in $109 million worth of sales last year. Fashion Valley grossed $110 million in 78 and the shoppers continue to buy. At 10 o'clock in the morning, shops are just opening up in Fashion Valley, ready for another business day. And even at this early hour, the parking lot is beginning to fill up. And by 2 o'clock, it's easy to see that few parking spaces remain open. But what makes a shopping center attractive to consumers, whether they be from San Diego, Mexico, or out of town? I think people have always come to a comfortable center and one that was convenient for them. Mission Valley Center is becoming more and more that way because of its prime location, because of its affiliation uh, with being uh, frontage I-8, having the stadium, having hotel circle, having restaurants, uh, having um, all the elements it takes for someone to come and spend a day happily in Mission Valley area, including the center. I think that accounts for a great deal of our good success. Any concern that there may be too many shopping centers springing up all over San Diego County? Well, uh, we have uh, experienced an increase, uh, and a, a nice size increase, in, in the face of a rather stiff retail competition that's come into the north of us. I believe that the powers that be think there's still enough ways to cut the pie. As sales boom, more shopping centers and so-called strip centers continue to spring up. In Kearney Mesa, one can see three strip centers within a two-block area. But with all the building and planning, one large area of San Diego has been left out, southeast San Diego. More than 100,000 people live there, but the area is void of any large shopping center complex. The business community needs to be aware that, um, th that the southeast community can support their businesses, their um, the, the, the income is here. People can support major businesses. They're supporting businesses in other communities. <laughs> There's a lot of vacant city-owned land in Southeast, and I think that the city council could work out some kind of formula where a developer could lease the land cheaply and uh, not have to put a lot of money up front to develop a shopping center. Developers agree that the demand is there for shopping centers and strip centers, and even with the prospects of a possible recession looming ahead, optimism remains the key word for those involved in the shopping center business. Jesse Macias, News 8, Mission Valley. Big shopping centers were a great investment. 
Times have changed. Downtown San Diego had been the county's main shopping destination for decades, but the scene was changing drastically by 1985. That's when our Hal Clement joined owner George Scott for a tour of the recently closed and empty downtown Walker Scott store. George Scott was a grateful immigrant who brought change to San Diego, and even when things were starting to pass him by, he was happy to celebrate more change and the city all grown up. The store is empty now. Plans for its future are incomplete. George Scott remembers so well where the men's shoes used to be and ladies' sportswear. And he remembers how downtown used to be, very different. It's changed dramatically, and I think wonderfully. I think we've had a well-planned growth in San Diego. George Scott was never afraid of progress or change. He installed the first escalator in Southern California right here, the first fire escape in San Diego. He remembers fighting to get the May Company its zoning in Mission Valley, got downtown merchants real mad, and that's not all. Well, I went home and told my wife she was very mad at me because that's where she bought her corn, right where the May Company <laughs> built her store, you know. He talked other businesses into coming here. It wasn't always easy. Why don't you go to San Diego? Eh, San Diego, you know, we had that kind of reputation. We really? did? You know, yeah, you know, kind of a hickey town, you know. That hickey town has now become bigger than he ever imagined. How could you imagine a city of over a million people here? No. I don't feel like a lot of people do that are old like I am. I'm very happy to see it grow as nicely as it is. And today, walking through his first store, now an empty shell, George Scott's thoughts went back to 1935. When I went back to the first day that I had ever been here, and that came back to me because I was here alone then, too. And if you keep me talking about it, I'll get tears in my eyes. But regrets? No. George Scott is proud of what San Diego has become and grateful for the part he was able to play in it. I was born in Scotland, you know, and I get an opportunity in this great country. This sounds like flag waving, but it's not with me. It's not with me to have the opportunities that have been presented to me are quite wonderful. There we go. Look at me. <laughs> the pricing machine is working, but unfortunately, these people won't be much longer, at least not at Walker Scott. It all began in San Diego 51 years ago. But the people who bought out Walker Scott last year have decided to close every outlet but the ones in Escondido and Palm Springs. All San Diego stores will close by the end of January. John Furlong gave Walker Scott 38 years. Well, it's a sad day because I came as a young boy starting in the shoe department and uh, worked my way up into my 38th year now and I started the downtown store. What will you do? Go out in the job market. The chain's owners say it had no real future as a small independent retailer in a growing market. Dolores Tate's customers and friends say they'll miss her. And yesterday, several came in, and we got to talking about it. What are we going to do? We won't see each other. And pretty soon, the tears, some of the tears are rolling down people's faces. And then pretty soon, there's tears rolling down mine, and I'm choking them back. It may be the trend, and it may make good business sense, but it sure is tough when something like this happens. Some things just don't show up in the profit and loss column. I'm very sad that it's had to happen, because it's been a very good company, and it's just real sad. <laughs> Just real, real sad. So count Walker Scott with the Gemcos and Handyman shrinking from sight. And add about 400 more San Diegans to the list of out-of-work retail people that's grown considerably since summer. Doug McAllister, News 8, Claremont. There were eight Walker Scott stores at one point in Southern California. All of them shut down by the end of 1986. In the early 1980s, retailers of all sorts were feeling the pinch of a long and deep recession. But in early 1983, the sun started to shine on the economy and on the shops at Fashion Valley Mall. Lorraine Kimmel captures the good feelings and the fashion and style that marked the times. In the shopping biz, more cars mean more sales. At least that's the adage at Fashion Valley. And that's why some people at this mall are pretty up these days. Well, our traffic count is up in double-digit figures. The merchants are much happier than they were in January. I think the fact that inventory levels are higher and they have the, the product to sell now, uh, not that they didn't before, but their inventory, the new, new things are coming in, and it's really reflecting in the merchants' attitudes and certainly by the shoppers being here. Bankert says department stores seem to be the busiest stores in the mall, but many smaller stores are pretty optimistic this month, too. Sales-wise, 
Our store has been very good for February. We've had some sales, and uh, the athletic shoe market, as of right now, still seems to be going very well. The peso loss, we've missed that, but it's still, still up. The sales and promotions could be part of the reason for more traffic, and then of course the snowbirds are here, but some retailers say that not everyone is looking for a bargain. I feel this year we're selling, personally, much larger mm -hmm. priced items and fewer inexpensive priced items. Traditionally, Fashion Valley isn't as affected by hard economic times as other malls in the San Diego area are. This one attracts a more affluent shopper. Regardless, retailers here see a pickup in traffic, even if it is slight, as a positive sign. Lorraine Kimmel, News 8, Fashion Valley. Last May, the mood in the stores was gloomy. There was little variety in merchandise and fewer shoppers. People held on to the money they had. One year later, attitudes are changing. The stores are getting busier. Fashion Valley is experiencing an upward trend in business. March is a really great starting point because uh, we were up 12% over last March and uh, this was really a welcome uh, sign to us because it had been a little bit difficult what with the rains and whatnot but that put us up 3% for our first quarter and to us we feel that's an indication that the economy is turning around. The last evaluation of the peso cut deeply into business here. The loss of Mexican shoppers hurt. Fashion Valley also attracts a lot of tourists from conventions in the area. Conventions were down last year, but the centers are booked for the summer. Shops are looking forward to those dollars. The hard economic times have made stores and manufacturers more competitive. Shoppers are not only willing to spend more money, they're finding more variety in the stores. I think that consumers have a great deal more confidence now than they may have had at this point last year or even in last fall. Confidence in the economy. Confidence in the economy, yes. The offerings that are being made to them in terms of merchandise and services in the community and so forth. Last year at this time, merchants were hurting. They haven't bounced back yet, but business is on the upswing. Liz Purcell, News 8, Fashion Valley. The Grossmont Center was around a little longer than some of the other big shopping centers, so it has dealt with shopping center problems for a long time. About 50 years ago, some shoppers were complaining about an act that they called civil disobedience. The crime, people parking where they weren't supposed to. Years later, that shopping center would turn into a classroom for some ambitious young students from the La Mesa Spring Valley School District. This is film of Grossmont Center in 1969. It was a story about people parking in no parking zones. You might call it an early working for you story with a viewer worried about safety, with people parking on a two-lane street clearly marked no parking. Another viewer, though, took it much deeper, seeing this as a symptom of, quote, our society's moral breakdown and growing disrespect for the law. But here's the thing. The street was on the shopping center's property, so police couldn't do anything about it. The shopping center is still there, but these stores, although popular for many years, are long gone. Woolworths and the Broadway among them. About 60 students from nine schools in the La Mesa Spring Valley Elementary School District plan to learn all they can about the Grossmont Shopping Center over the next five days. The fourth, fifth, and sixth graders will attend lectures and quiz store managers about shopping center operations instead of attending regular classes. You think you have more, a bigger inventory and a bigger warehouse than the your uh, compares like J.C. Penney, Kmart? Uh, right now we are the fifth largest uh, retailer in the company, which is pretty big. Many of these gifted students had questions about security at wards, especially shoplifting. They began the day with a tour of the store. After a mid-morning break, it was back to basics. Spelling. Number seven, manager. Naturally, that 15-word list included some the 9, 10, and 11-year-olds will hear throughout the week. Merchandise, consumers, advertising, and of course, mall. That's where the classes are held. Well, if you want kids to know about something, it's a lot better if they can come out and experience it instead of just reading it in a book. In order to learn about government, parents and teachers of these students raised some $32,000 last year and they went to Washington. Next year, they're looking forward to going to an Indian reservation. Jim Gordon, News 8, La Mesa. How about some of those sharp questions from those kids? 
Okay, in the late 1970s, there was a lot of buzz over the brand new UTC Shopping Center. It was so impressive, it inspired reporter Janine Tartaglia to write a poem about it. And in 1978, Judy Elfenbein was there for back to school shopping and saw big changes in on campus clothing styles and classroom supplies. By the time the center opened at 10 o'clock, hundreds of cars already packed the parking lot. Shoppers stroll through the mall hoping to find big bargains, free samples, and a place to unwind. T shirts to try on, salami to eat, stuffed bears in toy shops, and thongs for the feet. Free flowers for mother, balloons for the tot. Most stores were ready, but some stores were not. To touch up displays, just roll in the trees. Blow up the bagpipes and dance in the breeze. There are lamps for the living room, sunglasses to wear. Most mannequins are dressed, but a few are left bare. There's a nice rink to skate in for cool indoor fun, and benches along the walkway to sit in the sun. For movies, there's a theater with six separate screens. For couples, there's a jewelry store with wedding rings. For the hungry, there are snacks to munch on all day. For music, there's an organ that anyone can play. And if the sight of a big mouse makes you cry, take a look at the model who just winked her eye. You can dump the diet for whipped cream in your mouth, but I guess that's what grand openings are all about. At the University Town Center, Janine Tartaglia reporting for TV8 News. Public education is free, but as many people know, it's not cheap. Each year, hundreds and thousands of dollars are spent outfitting and equipping students for school. And this year is no exception. University Town Center is just one of the area shopping centers looking for back-to-school business. Like others, Town Center began its fall advertising campaign at the 1st of August. But Kitty Knapp says there's not too much competition between each of the shopping malls. Well, each of us have our own trade areas, and uh, as far as Mission Valley and Fashion Valley go, our trade areas overlap very slightly. So it, it really doesn't have too much effect on us. What about the back-to-school shoppers? When do you really see them coming in? Well, we're beginning to see them now, but probably next week and the week after, we will be very, very busy. Mary Boyle and her two daughters have begun the long, arduous task of clothes shopping. Many t-shirts will be pulled on and off before the final selection is made. But all in all, Mary Boyle considers herself fortunate. Her family has moved here from Oregon, and had they remained there, they would be looking for heavier and more expensive clothes. Sweaters and warmer jackets, and uh, we brought warm jackets down here that we haven't even worn. And we moved here in January, and we thought it was balmy. <laughs> so is it easier then? Mm-hmm, very much so. I think you can get by with probably less th less number of, of items. When my oldest daughter was younger, it was strictly dresses for school or, or uh, so that type of thing. Oh, yes, and I think it's it makes it a lot easier that they can wear sport clothes and jeans, and, and yet you can still dress them up a bit with cute T-shirts and blouses. And, Girls aren't the only ones particular about the clothes. Many parents who shop for boys find them as hard to please as girls. Boys are a little bit fussier and their clothes are more expensive because they're older. A generation ago, there was not the variety of back to school clothes there is now. Well, with the loosening up the dress codes, we're seeing a lot more jeans and t-shirts being bought as opposed to dresses a few years ago. Are they out completely? In, not, not in all departments. In the children's departments, the size 3 to 6X, we still sell a lot of dresses. We're also seeing that in the junior department, size 7 to 13 for the teenage girls, we're selling more dresses. So they're not out completely. From what we can see right now, we're on budget, and in some cases, like in the larger boys' departments, doing much better than budget. So things look like they're going really well here for us. And in recent years, UTC has seen some big changes with major renovations. 
It took years of planning and when Horton Plaza finally opened in August of 1985, uh, there was a massive celebration, music, balloons and speeches from the mayor and a sitting U.S. Senator. At the shops, you could buy everything from Cabbage Patch dolls to fine jewelry. As Susan Lickman, she's Susan Taylor now, uh, showed us Horton Plaza was not just a shopping center, but a spectacle. Who would have thought 12 years ago that Horton Plaza would one day look like this? It took vision to be a pioneer. In the decade of the 70s, Pete Wilson and Ernie Hahn renewed that vision. It's exciting. I can't describe it. I, how do you describe something like this? It's once in a lifetime. Just stay on the bus, forget about us. Put the blame on me if I don't see a yellow ribbon round the old. disappointed at all. I'm an artist as a matter of fact and these colors just wow me. What do you think of this center? Oh I think it's beautiful. It is so much more exciting and uh, more dramatic and so far exceeds my wildest dreams that uh, it's just impossible to put it into words but it certainly does look wonderful and I think it's gonna be a great success. <laughs> It's been all morning. <laughs> so you folks didn't come down just to look. You came down to buy. <laughs> <laughs> what did you buy? Tell her. Two Cabbage Patch dolls with teeth and jewelry. <laughs> we started very close to here on the corner of F and 4th Street in 1893. And you're now about approximately how many feet from your original about location? About 100 yards from our original location. So it's very close. Do you feel like you're coming home? Very much so. Quite a celebration a week ago as Horton Plaza heralded its arrival. Crowds of 60,000 browsing and buying each day. And the business spilled over to neighboring establishments. At the Westgate Hotel, crowds poured into the lobby, the restaurants, and the parking garage. What's your usual occupancy rate? Usually, I would say an average of about 70%, 70 to 80 percent usually. And what was it last weekend with the opening of Horton Plaza? Last week, it was 100 percent. We were completely full. And we had to actually turn people away because we didn't have any more rooms. At Dobson's restaurant, it was a madhouse. Thursday last week when the opening of the private opening of the plaza, I turned down over 300 reservations before 12 o'clock. And that's incredible. And when the doors open? When the doors open, Mr. Dobson turned away over 200 people at the door for the luncheon hour, if you can believe that. But a week has gone by, and within that time, we've had to say goodbye to a lot of the festivities. There are no more trumpeteers, fewer costume characters and bands, fewer crowds. Horton Plaza is having to start to settle in, is having to start the long road to economic survival on its own merits without all the fanfare. But its own merits appear to be enough. Oh, it don't mean a 
Horton Plaza merchants are swinging through the end of the first week, not with record business, but with a steady stream of sales nonetheless. How much business did you do last week as compared to today? Uh, last week at this time, I'd probably done twice as much. Chopped off, it seems like a little bit during the week, but not that much. How about you? Gosh, it's hard to say. Maybe uh, a third, something like that. And is it starting to pick up again now as the weekend's coming? Yeah, you can kind of feel everybody's out again. But even though business within Horton Plaza may be slightly off, that is not the case for some businesses outside the plaza. And now that a week has gone by, has business tapered off? No, it hasn't. As a matter of fact, our occupancy rate has gone up. And from an average of 80%, we're up to 100%. Our restaurant business in both the restaurants, I would say, has increased about 30%. Even the garage, our garage is, you can't even park in the garage anymore. And we try to keep parking space for our hotel guests, but we're finding that people are coming to go shopping and because there is no parking right now at Horton Plaza, and they're coming here. It's gone up instead of down. And so now Mr. Dobson is here until 3 o'clock in the morning, and I'm having to be here between 7 and 7.15 every day just to go ahead and cope with the staffing and the, uh, and the merchandise that's needed to be brought in. Do you think it's going to slow down at some point? I don't. Can you imagine what it's going to be like when the rest of the stores open and when the cinema opens? Not to mention the Christmas season. California, here I come. Here I come. Susan Lichtman, News 8 at Horton Plaza. North County was kind of the final frontier when it came to big malls. The North County Fair opened up to great expectations and big crowds in 1986, bringing an alternative and competition for Escondido's downtown shops. Good morning, it is indeed a good morning in downtown. Parking spaces abound, which means little work for parking meter man Tony Cheetah, who at age 78 spends every morning patrolling the streets. I'd like to see the downtown stay as it is, but I don't know. Downtown Escondido is comfortable. Howard Hopkins appreciates the small town feel, and so he gets his haircut at Marcella's. People are going to shop, and they're going to go where the shopping's best. And uh, the downtown will survive. But downtowns as we know them are changing. These sorts of areas often find customers gobbled up by big malls. Shoppers can find their loyalties tested. Even shop owners like Marcella Catalitz, a Czechoslovakian immigrant, gets excited talking about that new mall. Well, I think it's really good because we don't have to drive so far to go to department stores. But downtowns relish their charm. There's a certain intimacy here. Downtown Escondido is the kind of place where mothers can walk their children. Downtown here is unlike big city downtowns. And that's the way many of the people who live here prefer it. I think there's going to be a lot of changes. I think it's going to slow down over here. Everyone's going to go over there. They got more things over there. Just before we drove to the mall, who should pull up here but North County Mall Security on an emergency shopping trip. So, uh, what's the mall person doing in downtown today? We're coming down to pick up some whistles. <laughs> the mall doesn't sell them, huh? No. But one look at the North County Fair parking lot, and you can see their intent on selling about everything else you could possibly want. A little bit of music to put you in the mood, then once inside, you elbow your way past an estimated 25,000 people. The mall is estimating more folks are here than you'd likely ever find in the history of downtown Escondido. For the most part, uh, the residents of Escondido haven't been shopping downtown, but they've been driving uh, all the way down to the Mission Valleys or the Fashion Valleys or the La Jolla's of the county uh, to satisfy their retail needs that weren't in the downtown. And uh, now they don't have to do that. Meantime, back in downtown, Will Chadwick is talking about his toy business. He says he's moved from a mall to Grand Avenue because he says somebody has to be the first. There's a lot of new businesses moving down here. That's, that's a very positive sign. So if the splash and neon of a super mall is not exactly your speed, take heed. Shopkeepers in downtown Escondido say they're here to stay. Bob Siegel, News 8, Escondido. Escondido has arrived, and people in the North County are still arriving at its newest attraction, the North County Fair, a multi-million dollar shopping center. I heard the other day a lady, lady saying, I can't really believe it's in Escondido. Pat McCarthy, the mall's marketing director, is finding it hard to believe just how well the center is doing. 
In its third week, shopper traffic on the weekends is still way up, just like it was grand opening day. For the first week or so, it seemed this was a big open market to explore. Now it seems shoppers are more acquainted and they're spending money. Most stores that opened on February 20th are showing about a 38% increase over plan. The plan is to attract people with buying power, the North County elite. That is cute. Very different. Yeah, the Specialty shops right. not found in other centers are drawing women from places like Rancho Bernardo and Rancho Santa Fe. The people in this area haven't had a mall, per se, up until now, so it really gives them somewhere to come and shop. We're trying to attract buyers that like one-of-a-kind things. It was a long wait for the center. Voters turned it down three times before it was passed, but there are some who still think it's the same old thing, just another mall. I think the novelty will wear the, off and people yeah, go back to where I they always they have will. been, unless there are unusual attractions here, oh. which I haven't seen yet. People have long shopped on Grand Avenue in Escondido. The area has an established clientele. The North County Fair is now competition, but sales from some downtown stores may be proof the two districts will live in business harmony. February sometimes is a, is a slow month for us, but uh, we have, like I say, found a nice increase. There are some problems amid all the excitement of this new shopping center. The big one is parking or too few spaces. About 1,000 spaces are blocked by construction of two major stores. The stores will open in the spring, and so will more parking. Dawn Fratangelo, News 8. It's called the North County Mall now, and it's still open. And Graven Avenue in Escondido is a pretty cool place to spend some time. Finally, at their height in the 80s, there were about 2,500 malls in the USA. These days, the number is well below 1,000 and dropping, with e-commerce and the pandemic being blamed for accelerating their demise. Thank you so much for joining us and watching this throwback special. To see more throwbacks like this one on CBS 8 Plus, click on the News tab at the top of the screen. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. We'll see you next time.